Hey Chapel students, what's up? I'm Casey and welcome to this week's living room. Thanks so much for tuning in. We're so glad you guys are here. So with all this talk of phase one and phase two and reopening and that sort of stuff, we on staff at student ministry are getting really excited, brainstorming ideas for ways we can hopefully hang out with you guys this summer while still of course maintaining all socially acceptable distancing boundaries and that sort of stuff. In our brainstorming, we were trying to think of fun ideas to serve you guys and just hang out and have a great time this summer because I know a lot of summer plans are getting canceled, which is such a bummer. So if you guys have any ideas for things you'd want us on Suit Ministry to host or just fun event ideas or something, not sure 100% yet if they can happen, but we are going to plan hopefully that something can happen, that we can hang out with you guys in some capacity. So drop in the comments some suggestions or ideas you might have. Um, I know we've thrown around like worship nights in the parking lot, um, some movie nights in the parking lot, a lot of parking lot ideas. But yeah, so if you guys have anything, any ideas for how you guys would like to maybe hang out this summer or ways we can maybe serve our community, um, anything really, we're so open to it. So drop them in the comments and you can also text any of us on staff with some of your ideas and hopefully something can happen and we can see you guys all very soon. So tonight we've got an awesome, awesome lineup for you guys. We have Sam Odie and his friend MC out in Colorado leading us in worship, which is so cool. And we've got Reagan reading scripture and youth pastor Landon from Crosswalk is bringing us the word in James 3 tonight. And you guys are gonna wanna take some notes because he's got some really awesome and insightful things to say that when applied to your lives will really, will really change them for the better. So. With that, Sam and MC can take it away. Hey, Chapel family, this is Sam. I miss you guys. Just wanted to bring you into our view here at Cricket Creek Ranch. It might not be very clear, but those are the mountains. They still have snow on them. This is my friend MC. She works with me here at Cricket Creek, and we're just excited to worship with you all this weekend. Here we go.
中爱你。Hi, I'm Reagan, and today I'm reading James 3, one, verses 1 through 7. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive the stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle in whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rooter whenever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how a forest of little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. Hey Chapel students, uh, my name is Landon Morrow and uh, I'm a, a pastor here in town. My wife Katie and I are pastors here at another church in Williamsburg Crosswalk Church and I just want to say thank you and I'm so honored just to be able to take a brief moment and uh, encourage you guys tonight wherever you are tuning in, thank you. And uh, I just want to quickly say you guys are incredible and I love seeing everything that's happening in the student ministry of the chapel. Uh, I view it actually more than just a student ministry, and I hope you do too. It's more than just a ministry. It's more than just students gathering. It's actually, it's a, it's a movement of young people on fire for Jesus and ready to truly change our city, change our schools, and change the world and uh, share the message of, of hope and the message of Jesus with people who are broken, lost, and hurting. And you are significant and you matter and God sees you. and. Um, God's doing incredible things in this movement and shout out to Isaac. What an incredible leader he is, um, leading uh, in so many different ways at the chapel and, and it's so cool to see. And Isaac, I wanna be more like you, for real. The more and more I get to know you, the more and more I get to find out just how cool and authentic you are and how much you love Jesus. And I also just wanna say, chapel students, you are in such a great church. Your lead pastor, Pastor Travis Simone, incredible leader and man of God. And let me just tell you this, to have a lead pastor that believes and invests as much as he does in the next generation, it's pretty its pretty magnificent and it's not normal. Um, so you're in good soil, stay planted, keep following Jesus, keep loving Jesus, and keep, uh, keep staying connected to what God is doing at the Chapel Student Ministry. And I'm excited to be able to share a message with you tonight. It's called Life Language. Life, if you're taking notes, you can write on the top of the page, Life Language language. And I want to talk to us about uh, the power that we have in the language and the vocabulary and the words that we use. And we've been in James chapter 3. I get the honor and privilege of talking through a little bit of James chapter 3 today. And uh, I believe it was already read, but I just want to recap a couple things that it says. It says that even though the tongue is such a small part of the body, it has great power. And it continues to say that the tongue, even though it's a small part of the body, one of the smartest, smallest parts of the body, it actually is the most dangerous part of the body. And in Proverbs chapter 18, it, it actually goes to say that the tongue has the power of life and death. The, the tongue, the words that we use, our vocabulary, our, our language that we use is powerful, can bring destruction or it can bring life. I think a lot of times, uh, we we underestimate the power that our words have. Because we sometimes underestimate the significance, we maybe wonder, man, do, do people really care what I say? Do people really uh, have an opinion of, of what my thoughts are and the language that I use? And sometimes we underestimate the power of our words and that leads us to maybe being careless with our words, maybe being reckless with our vo vocabulary, or maybe being destructive with our language. I wanna encourage you tonight that our words, and in this passage, it clearly states that your words and my words, they matter, they're powerful, they can bring life or they can bring destruction. And I wanna encourage you tonight to make the shift. Maybe we can challenge the narrative and we can actually change our own language and our own vocabulary 
to being something that brings fruitfulness and brings life and and brings joy to people's lives. And you know what I love about Jesus is that Jesus, he has an amazing way that as we start following him, we can walk in and operate in a grace that he pours up upon us. And you know, sometimes things that we can't even fix on our own, Jesus is able to help us. And actually it says in 2 Corinthians 12, it says that um, God's grace is sufficient for us, that his power is made perfect in our weakness. And maybe even as I'm speaking, you're thinking of the language that you use and the vocabulary that you use. And you're thinking maybe that's one of your weaknesses and it's an area that you can grow. And I want to encourage you right here, right now, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he can come alongside you. He can empower you. He can pour his grace, his sufficient grace upon you. And he can help you, empower you to make the shift to using life language. Life language. There's just three things I want to encourage you, wherever you're tuning in tonight, three things that Jesus can help shift our language. And uh, I hope that you can write these things down. I hope you can take these things to heart. And I hope that maybe if we can get these three shifts, uh, then God can use us to do incredible things in our city, in our world, in our schools. Um, so three, three shifts that I think we need to make when it comes to being followers of Jesus, things that Jesus, he encourages us to shift as we start following him and pertains to our language that we use. Number one, we have to shift from destructive to constructive. From destructive to constructive. You can write that. Number one, the shift from destructive to constructive. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that, that we, as followers of Jesus, we are to encourage one another and build each other up. Encourage one another and build each other up. Do you know that your words have the power to build people's lives? I think a lot of times in our culture, we look around and we see so much uh, bullying that runs rampant in our culture. We see so much negativity. We see so much uh, you, people using their word to tear other people down. But Jesus has called us as followers of Jesus to be different. Man, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm sick and tired of seeing other people being put down by followers of Jesus. People who proclaim to be Christians that make fun of and bully and, and, and put other people down, that deconstruct other people's lives using the power of their words. Come on, chapel students. God's called us to be different. It's time for us to stand up and shift the language and challenge the narrative and say, you know what? God's called us to be different. God's called us to make the shift from being destructive with our words to being constructive. Can I be a person that chooses to build people's lives with the words? that come out of my mouth. I wanna encourage you tonight or whatever time or place you're tuning in right now, take a moment and take inventory of your language and say, Jesus, can you just purify that? God, can you get out of me any destructive language or verbiage and vocabulary? God, can you, can you put in me a tongue and a language and, and a vocabulary that builds people's lives? That's number one, we have to make the shift of destructive to constructive. And second, we have to make the shift from perversion to purity. Come on, young people, wherever you are, it's time to make the shift from perversion to purity. And Jesus, he will empower you to make the shift. It says in, in Romans chapter 12 too, it says that we are no longer to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. In other words, what it's saying is that as followers of Jesus, we're not supposed to be conformed to the patterns of Jamestown High School. We're not supposed to be conformed to the patterns of Williamsburg, Virginia or the United States of America. We're not supposed to look like, act like, or talk like what the rest of the world and society and culture look and talk like. God's called us to be different. Come on, it's time for us to stand up and say, you know what? I'm gonna speak whatever is true. I'm going to speak whatever is honorable. I'm going to speak whatever is pure. I'm going to speak whatever God has put in me to speak. I'm going to have a different language. I'm called to be different, to look different, to act different, to talk differently than the rest of the world. Come on, it's time to make the shift. Maybe you can in this moment just take a second and take inventory of the words that you use and say, you know what, Jesus, is there perversion that's coming out 
of my mouth. God, is there, God, is there anything that's evil that's that's coming and spewing out anything corrupted coming out of my mouth? God, can I make the shift? God, can you can you create in me a pure mind and a pure heart? Can you help me choose purity over perversion? And lastly, the first one, I'll recap for a second. The first one is we have to shift from destructive to constructive. The second one, we have to choose to shift from perversion to purity. And number three, we have to make the shift from, from despair to praise. Despair to praise. I love this one. And this is a convicting one. Uh, hopefully for all of us, but especially for me. It says in Isaiah 61, Isaiah 61, he's writing and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me. And he goes on to start to say all these different things that God anoints him to do. And this promise is a promise for you and I. Do you know the spirit of God, when we follow Jesus, it's upon you and it's upon me and he's anointed us. And one of the things that you read in Isaiah 61 is that God, when his anointing is upon us, he's given us a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And I think a lot of times in our world, we can look around at our current situations and our current circumstances, even in a pandemic, and the narrative around us is despair. The narrative around our lives is a narrative of negativity. You know, God's called us as followers of Jesus and he's given us a better perspective that even when the situation around us is discouraging and negative he's given us the opportunity and he empowers us to make the choice to say i'm going to choose praise instead of despair come on as followers of jesus we have to make the shift and say god i need you to help me that even when everything around me looks negative and everything around me looks looks discouraging. God, I, I need you to give me fresh eyes to see what you're doing. I, I need you to, to give me fresh eyes to see how good you are even in the midst of the of the craziness happening around us. I love, if you look at the Psalms, a lot of them were written by uh, David, who was just one of the legends of, of the Bible. And David, as he writes a lot of the Psalms, he oftentimes is writing from a dark place where he's hiding or he's running for his life or things are not going the way he wants. And he's in despair a lot of times as he's penning, as he's writing down the Psalms. But as you look at the Psalms, oftentimes they start with this. It says, God, I will bless your name. God, I will pour out my praise upon your name. David, even in the midst of despair, even in the midst of discouragement, he chooses praise. Take inventory of your words. Choose praise over despair. I love you guys so much. You guys are incredible. I hope this message can encourage you right where you are. Remember, God has called us to use a life language. I love you guys. Have an amazing time. You're amazing.